This is the um, beginning of a series of lectures on pumps. Um, we'll be talking about uh, well, pumps, uh, centrifugal pumps specifically. Uh, centrifugal pumps are perhaps uh, a little bit more um, not challenging, but a little bit more uh, more to them than positive displacement pumps, for example. But uh, you'll just uh, you won't see you won't see the difference because this. Typically, what most people are using, even in their households, are using small centrifugal pumps. So, um, I'm going to try and explain to you uh, how these pumps are sized in terms of the application that you require of them, and uh, how perhaps you can check uh, your own pumps and pump at home and see if uh, it's doing uh, the job that you expect to, expect it to do. Um, if you see me looking uh, looking over there in the distance, uh, it's it's not that somebody's flashing cards and so I'm trying to figure out to say next. Uh, I found that um, I've, uh, when I write scripts, they're uh, inevitably uh, terribly boring. So uh, I'm trying to, to be as natural and uh, spontaneous as possible so that it's, uh, it's not so boring and maybe, uh, maybe even sometimes uh, interesting. I've given a lot of lectures. Uh, uh, all over the place on uh, to people on the pump systems, uh, you know, mostly engineers, but sometimes technicians and then people like that. And uh, I think I've, uh, I've overdone it with equations and probably bored them uh, significantly. Uh, I'm going to try not to do that here. Um, I, I did have some uh, experimental stuff that I would show them uh, a miniature pump system and, and uh, show them how siphon works and things like that. And I'm sure there were quite happy for the relief that that, uh, that uh, gave. So um, I'm going to try to be a little lighter and uh, a little more practical uh, with uh, what I'm, what I'm going to show you. So let's draw a typical pump system. So we have a suction tank and then the pump. The pump is going to go, you know, I'm going to make it simple for now. It's going to go to another tank. And I'm going to label some interesting points. I'm going to call this point S for suction, D for discharge. This point is going to be point 2, and this point is going to be point 1. So, here's the pump, the suction tank, the discharge tank. The job of the pump is to get liquid from point from this, this tank to this tank, and eventually, when everything stabilizes, the liquid is going to go from point one all the way to point two. When this tank is full, and this tank, this tank keeps getting full, of course, from somewhere else, or else it would become empty, right? So it's either a shallow well or uh, some sort of tank that's being filled by another another process. So that. So the pump has to get liquid from point one to point two. Typically, point two is higher, so it requires uh, some energy to get something from a low point to a higher one. And also, it has to deliver that liquid at a certain flow rate. So uh, there's going to be a certain velocity in uh, this pipe, and this velocity causes friction, and friction requires energy. So the pump's going to have to supply that energy to get the liquid through the pipe at the flow rate we, we require. Why friction? Do you, you, you think it's unusual that we should have friction in pipes? It, it does sound unusual, but uh, there's friction everywhere. I mean, uh, you can walk on the floor if you didn't have friction between your feet and the ground. So everything that moves causes friction, including water, for example, in pipes. Because if I tried to push that and get a big pump, try to push it really, really fast through those pipes, that would take more and more energy, as you can imagine. So how do we figure, uh, how do we start to figure this out? I'm going to write a very simple formula here. It's going to be the only one, and uh, you're going to see how easy it is. So I'm going to write that the pressure between the discharge and the suction, it's the job that the pump does, divided by density, and don't worry about this, we'll go over this, it's uh, a lot easier than it actually looks. This, so the pressure, this differential pressure, the job the pump is doing, is going to have to equal the work required to get fluid from point one to point two, 
So I'm going to call that those heights H1. Sorry, we're going to do H, uh, H2 minus H1. So we have to use a baseline to figure out what H1 is. Let's just call, uh, we'll use the center line of the pump, for example, as our reference point. So H1 is the distance between the center line of the pump and point 1, and uh, point H2 will be the difference between the height of the point 2 and the center line of the pump, that's H2. So the difference in pressure is going to be equal to the difference in the height between 1 and 2, plus what are we missing? We're missing friction, so we're going to need to figure out what is the friction between points 1 and 2. And uh, that's not very difficult at all. We're going to find some very convenient tables that will give us the friction. Because the reason uh, we need tables and things like that, we could also have formulas, but tables are quite easy to do, is because the friction is going to depend on the velocity. So you're going to have to make start with an assumption that my, your system is going to pump fluid to a certain flow rate. For example, in a house, uh, if you have 10 gallons a minute, if you're trying to fill your bath at 10 gallons a minute, that's going to be pretty good. You're, uh, you're going to have a bath ready in uh, five, seven, eight minutes. If you fill, try to fill that bath at uh, you know half a gallon a minute, it's going to take it out. You know, and it's not going to be so great. So you're going to establish what, especially if we're talking about a new system, what flow rate is required to do the job that you're looking for. So that's uh, the start. It's uh, as you see. There's nothing very complicated here. We're going to look a bit more into this term on the next uh, the next video, and we're going to try and uh, figure out what what the result of this is going to be with some typical numbers, and uh, we'll do some examples some examples of this you know, later on in further videos. All right. So um, take it easy. Uh, you can learn more on my website called pumpfundamentals.com and uh, enjoy. Bye-bye. Have you heard that entropy isn't what it used to be?